Before we begin, I'm going to share a clip from the Smile to Jannah channel that shows the mentality of Muslims and how they think about Allah in regard to bad things that happen or potentially worse things that didn't happen. You guys, dua repels hardships as we're told in the hadith. Here millions of people made dua in Arafah, in Hajj and I'm sure you guys were making duas yesterday at home as well and it just goes to show this could have been really bad but Alhamdulillah Allah accepted some people's duas. So let me get this straight. Philip Manshaus who was praising other white extremists online, he was inspired by Christ Church and the El Paso shootings, went into a mosque to attack and kill as many people as possible, but was thwarted by a 65 year old ex-Pakistani army officer, which we are very grateful for. But he's saying that this could have been worse if it wasn't for duas. So all of those duas he's saying led to this result. Now, I don't know about you, but if my God sends a murderer into, into his house of worship to assassinate and kill as many people as possible, and you're saying, Alhamdulillah, Allah only killed nobody, but it could have been much worse. But Alhamdulillah, because this is all Allah's will and because of all the duas, we were protected. Like, how safe do you feel going to the mosque now? I mean, this is completely like, this is so horrible. I do not wish this sort of fear and intimidation and uh, frankly terrorism to be inflicted on anybody. Yet now this is a situation we're in and you're saying Alhamdulillah for this. You're saying thank Allah that nobody was killed. And yes, we, you know, we are all grateful, even us who don't believe in Allah, we are grateful that nobody died. However, how can you say that this is not as bad because of duas? Because that, that begs the question, like, why would Allah let such a thing happen to his choice worshippers? The next time this happens, if he actually manages to kill 100 people, are you going to say, Alhamdulillah, he didn't kill 200 people and it was because of the duas that we made? I mean... This is like absurd, but this type of thinking, these this type of these type of statements are, are uttered all the time, and they like, they blow me away. They blow me away with how dumb they are. I mean, I'm sorry to say, and I'm being a little bit rude. It's it's lunacy. It's lunacy to believe that your God is actually behind this, and He's allowing a lesser evil to happen because you prayed to Him. Yet. He's actually putting this evil on you. It's, it's crazy. It's just insane. You see, God or Allah has the ultimate get out of jail card. Anything bad happens, it's a test. Anything good happens, he gets all the credit. Scientists discover a cure for cancer. Alhamdulillah, we should all thank Allah. If my brother almost dies in a car accident, Alhamdulillah, it was because of our dua that Allah kept that harm away. He only wrecked his, you know, $40,000 car, but at least he didn't die. Yes, it's great that he didn't die, but Allah had nothing to do with it. Allah never has anything to do with it. If Allah is responsible for this young white male hating Muslims and then going into a mosque to shoot them up, but not managing to kill anyone, are you sure you're worshipping the right God? At the end of the day, it comes down to the problem of evil, theodicy. There is really no good answer for why there is evil in the world. Judaism, Christianity and Islam, none of them solve the problem of evil because there is no solution. There is so much unnecessary suffering hardwired into our existence. Emphasis on unnecessary. Either God is a monster or he doesn't exist. I tend to believe the latter. In the show Diagnosis, which I was watching on Netflix the other day, this man said he prayed every day to God to take away the disease that his daughter was suffering with, a rare disease of the brain that was probably genetic. 
Why would you pray to God to remove the disease that you think He put there? If He put it there in the first place and He has infinite wisdom and this is all part of His plan, why would He listen to you? Not only that, God already knows what you want, so why do you even ask Him? Does He like a groveling? Does He like to hear parents cry every night because they think the sick child is going to die? Let's be real. Allah doesn't exist. He never did. He doesn't listen to du'as. Not any more often than random chance. Anyway, if you get what I mean. In every measurable way possible, there is no effect Allah has on the world. You can make believe and keep assuming He's there doing stuff, but that would be lunacy. Free yourself from the trap of believing in an intervening God. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider joining me on Patreon or sending me a one-time donation on PayPal. It keeps the lights on. Details are below on my support page. This is Abdullah Samir signing out. By the way, if you have some suggestions or topic ideas you'd like me to do for the next video, please leave them in the comments. Thank you.